The President Barack Obama farewell tour has now taken him to Australia, where he is pledging billions of dollars to the Green Climate Fund, something that isn't sitting well with his Australian hosts. And as plenty of Americans up in arms about where our money is going in the fight against what is either real or still to some junk science, climate change. Welcome back to Midpoint. President of the Space and Science Research Corporation, a leading independent climate research firm, a former White House space program advisor, also author of a book I heartily recommend, Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. John Casey joins us in the studio. John, pleasure to see you again. Ed, good to be back. I don't think people have quite gotten this whole thing about the 30-year cold <laughs> spell yet, but I think we're going to introduce them to it if they haven't heard it already. First of all, let's start right out at the top. The president cuts a big deal with China. Everybody's talking about it. It is exactly what the world needed, according to some. I can already guess by your reaction, as I've heard from many before, that this doesn't mean much and it's not going to really last. That's correct, exactly. The deal with the Chinese is uh, certainly good PR and support, supports the environmental base of the pres president. But when you get down, boil away the, uh, the top layer and see what's beneath, there's not a lot for the U.S. except more economic distress by higher prices for utilities. And if you look at the uh, Chinese side of it, they're making out like bandits. They get to produce as much CO2 as they want build as many coal-fired power plants as they want for the next 16 years. It's clearly a lopsided agreement, if it were a necessary agreement at all. Then hit me with some common sense here, because if it is as bad as you say, and some of the experts have said, why did we cut this deal? What's, what could possibly be the positives here? Well, on the president's side, uh, as we all know, he's taken a lot of hits on the international stage. This is the one venue where he could elevate uh, his, his uh, presidency and perhaps his legacy, which is two years away. So he's working on that already. So clearly an international agreement with the number one country on the planet, and certainly for the future, is a big step up for him. However, if you look at uh, other things that are going on, uh, I think that he's also trying to get his party prepared for the election in two years, and an international agreement of this scope supposedly would help there too. Wouldn't we be a lot smarter, and the president be a lot smarter, if he was getting us ready for what you detail in your book, Dark Winter, and that is the fact that it's going to get colder. This is a global cooling issue that we're involved in here, and this is the sun that is involved. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a lot smarter if we got ready for that? Absolutely. I mean, the facts are pretty clear. There is no global warming yet. We've had no growth in global temperature whatsoever for 18 long years now. Now, that's a startling fact, but it's true. And what that means is for most of the time, we've heard about man-made global warming. There hasn't been any. Then why do we continue to hear the phrase global warming? There, why does it exist? There are two components to all of this, the politically correct version of climate change and the scientific factual reality of climate change. They are not the same. They are diametrically opposed. By using the greenhouse gas theory since 1988, the U.S. and other nations around the world have been able to impose new regulations, new controls over people, their property, and the industrial base. When you do that using the greenhouse gas theory, you can get a lot of things done, including taxation, that you couldn't get done before. On the science side, however, the sun is the supreme ruler of climate, and it's doing something totally different. Then why does science always lose in this PR battle to get the message out? When it comes to power politics, the scientists have always lost. In this case, the scientists pushing CO2 have been tools for the political establishment to get their agenda going. And unfortunately, a lot of scientists have gone over to that side, the dark side of climate science. And instead of the bright side, the truthful, factual side, they're not telling the people the truth about what's happening with the sun, this uh, potentially dangerous cold climate that's coming, uh, which comes every 206 years. And unfortunately, the people are going to pay the price for this diametrically opposed climate situation. Is it just a matter of being ignorant on the president's side or just wanting to push something to make somebody else a couple of bucks? Well, I can tell you from my perspective, Please. the president, since he began running, has been well informed of what's happening with the sun and this new cold climate. 
clearly a lot of people know what's going on. We all use the same satellites. We all observe the same sun. There's really not a lot of question about what's happening with the sun. Hold that thought because we're going to come back and do a lot more. After the break, more with John Casey. The book, once again, is Dark Winter, and it's more about cooling than it is about warming. We'll explain right here on Midpoint.